Good morning. It's wonderful to see you all this morning. Welcome to this service of worship. Uh, on behalf of the whole church, uh, I welcome you. If you're guests uh, with us, we are so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. And it's wonderful to be together uh, on this beautiful morning to worship God. And today, uh, really the theme of our service is openness to God. And the theme of our stewardship campaign, which we're also in, is gratitude. And so as we're worshiping together today, we open our lives and ourselves to God, and we give thanks to God for all that God has so generously given. Well, first things first, there should be a worship attendance pad at the end of your pews. And we really appreciate it when you sign in. We do use that information and it enables us to keep up with you and you to keep up with the church. And do know that one of your ministers takes these on Monday and offers a prayer for each one of you personally. You have an insert in your bulletin. I would invite you to look at the programs and ministries that are happening in the near future and this week. And just make note of one of those. If you are visiting with us, there is a visitor's coffee on the first Sunday of every month, and that will be next Sunday. So please note that as well. Uh, you notice that today, Dr. Brewster talked about our theme. And so since our story is a familiar story in the scriptures this morning, the parable of the, the good seed, our memory verse today is some seed fell into good soil and bore fruit. And our word or words for today is good soil. So why don't you say that memory verse with me? Some seed fell into good soil and bore fruit. And may we all bear fruit as we are here to worship God today and be inspired for service to God's kingdom. So now let our worship begin as our choir leads us. And now will you stand and join me in our call to worship. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Happy are those who serve the Lord with gladness.
I invite you now to turn back to your bulletins so that we can affirm our faith together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. And we are very excited about the sacrament of baptism, and so we enthusiastically look forward to Katie and Kyle coming forward with William for his baptism. And in addition to William, you get to see William's big brother, Matthew, who we're very glad is here. Friends, baptism is a sign of God's mercy and love, reminding us that we do not come into relationship with God on the basis of anything we do, but rather on the basis of God's gracious invitation to us. Children have always had an important place among the people of God. Remember the words of Jesus, how he said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such as these belong the kingdom of God. And I ask you now, as you stand before God in this congregation, do you affirm your faith in Christ? We do. And do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races? And will you nurture William North in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life? We will. Okay. William North, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now if you'll place your hands on him also. Yeah, there you go. William North, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here, let's turn you around. Wow, what a sharp vest and tie and everything. Wow. So what a blessing it is for us to participate in this holy sacrament of baptism. We do that, of course, by pledging ourselves uh, to do all that we can as a community of faith and individually as we have opportunity uh, to help William North to know the love and the grace of God and as he grows up among us more and more to understand God's love for him and more and more 
to understand God's call on his life. And someday he'll stand at this or some other altar and make his own profession of faith in Christ. And this is God's wonderful gift offered to us without price. Say hello to William North. Well, we get to be the enthusiastic extended family now using the response in the bulletin. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that William North, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Remember not, remember not, oh.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 2 through 9. Jesus said many things to them in parables. While teaching them, he said, listen to this. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked the seeds and they produced nothing. Some seeds fell into good soil and bore fruit. Upon growing and increasing, the seed produced in one case a yield of 30 to 1, in another case a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case a yield of 100 to 1. He said, whoever has ears to listen should pay attention. God speaks to us through the reading of the scripture. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come down for our time together. Kids, come on. Well, today we're going to explore the importance of being prepared. So let's imagine that we are headed to Disney World. We're in the car. We got our mouse ears, and this is the way to Disney World, Disney World, Disney World. This is the way to Disney World, except our parents forgot to put gas in the car. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. How far do you think we're going to get? 10 minutes. It's a small trip after all, right? Yeah, we weren't prepared. If we didn't fuel up the car before we even got in for a trip, we wouldn't be prepared. Or what if, and I know this has never happened to anyone in this room, what if you had a book report due and you didn't read the book? What kind of grade do you think you'd get on the book report? How do you think that an F at best, like uh, t maybe a C minus, yeah, to a... Uh, to say that it was the best of times does not tell the full story. It was also, I believe, the worst of times. And in conclusion, I do not like green eggs and ham. <sighs> do you think it's going to go well? No, not so well. Well, those are a couple of thought examples. I thought we would show you an example. This is my friend Ellie. Say hi to Ellie. And I thought we'd show you a great example of being prepared by playing some dodgeball. So what's going to happen when I go one, two, three, we're going to play dodge... <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that yet, Ellie. All right, so... Right, so what we're... I'm just trying to explain how the game goes. I wasn't actually saying one, two, three yet. <laughs> I guess I, w I wasn't... I'm still not prepared for that. So the deal is... So what, what, what's going to happen is I will dip, duck, dive, dodge when I count one, two, three. And <laughs> I'm just not prepared, am I? Who keeps winning? Who keeps being prepared? 
All right, well, we'll play when I go one, two, three. <laughs> I'm also not a good athlete, which may have something to do with it. I guess you win all of them. So here's the deal. It's really important to be prepared, isn't it? It's important to be ready. It's important to be ready for Disney World. It's important to be ready for your book report. It's important to be ready for dodgeball. I'm not even gonna say a number. And it's important to be ready for God's love. It's one thing to say we're ready for God's love. It's another thing to say we're prepared for God's love. But what are we doing with our hearts to prepare ourselves for all the wonderful things God has for us? What are some things we could do? Could praying help? Yeah. Could coming to church and being with people who love God too help? Could forgiving people, even when they've done us wrong, help our hearts be prepared? There's a lot of ways to be prepared. Let's do a closing prayer together, and let's, let's be a heart prayer, because we need to prepare our hearts for God's love, just the way if we're preparing for a book report or Disney World or Dodgeball, okay? So I'm going to say this. Prepare our hearts for you, O Lord. Prepare our hearts for you, Oh, Lord, and let's all put our hands on our hearts. Let's feel that heartbeat as we say it. We don't have to say it loud. We just have to feel it. Ready, go. Prepare our hearts for you, oh, Lord. Prepare our hearts for you, oh, Lord. Prepare our hearts for you, oh, Lord. Amen. And now we're prepared for God's love. It's as easy as one, two, three. Well, as Mark said, one of the ways we prepare our hearts for God's love is to worship and be in community with one another. And so at this time, would you please stand and greet those around you by wishing them or sending them the peace of God.
Please be seated. As I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the service, our stewardship emphasis is ongoing right now, and our theme for this year is gratitude. We give and we live uh, as God's people in the world out of gratitude for what we have received. We give because we first received. We loved, as the Bible says, before, because he first loved us. And so gratitude is our emphasis during this season uh, of our stewardship campaign. And I'm so grateful uh, to have Connie Beck uh, to share with us this morning. Uh, Connie is a retired bank executive, a very active member of this congregation along with her husband, Frank Tilly. And she's a member of the Finance Committee. And Connie, thank you so much thank you. for sharing Pleasure being us. here. So let me first say that my husband uh, and I attend the 930 service, and we are fifth row, center section. So we're not used to coming to the 11 o'clock. Frank, would you wave at everybody, please? There's my husband. OK, so we are longtime Methodist. Um, I am a corporate person, so I'm comfortable with mission statements. And I'm proud to tell you that our church has a mission statement. So let me tell you what it is. It is to love God by following Christ and to serve people who help transform lives. So when I was asked to talk about gratitude, I said it's easy. I feel it, I observe it, I sense it. I, I, am, I feel it in this church all of the time and I'm proud to be part of it. So I'm going to give you a snippet of some of the things I'm grateful for in this church. First, I wanna say I'm grateful to Robert Stovall and these choirs and they do wonderful, wonderful songs that praise our Lord every Sunday. Yes, thank you. And you know, Robert, I also especially like spiritual music, so we'll see. Okay, I'm also grateful that Peggy Graff is with us. And you know, she plays majestic organ music for us that lifts us up every Sunday. Thank you, Peggy. So let me mention, I'm very grateful for Lamar Smith. Lamar Smith works all the time to bring new people into our church. And did you know this church, a downtown ministry, has nearly 300 new, new members this year. Thank you, Lamar, for making people welcome. And then, of course, I just really do love to see Mike Marshall. You know, you can see him on Moments, of My Moments with Mike every Thursday on our website. And it will make you smile and you'll learn something about our church. Um, also, one of the pleasures I have is when Linda McDermott leads us in a pastoral prayer. It's always so thoughtful and meaningful to deepen our love of God. And Chuck, yes, thank you, Linda. And Chuck Graff, you know, as I say, Chuck Graff has to be the best camper in this, in this congregation because he takes you all on camping trips. We don't go, but we support it. And then he also, he also uh, helps our congregation with mission trips where we help others who are in need, like after Harvey last year. I'm grateful, I am grateful to all the parents, these and all the, all the parents who bring their infants to our altar on Sundays for baptism. I am very grateful to all their parents who bring their children to our Vacation Bible School and to all of the children's ministries. Mr. Mark, I very much appreciate what you do. And you brighten so many people's lives in their young life. And what I'm so thrilled about in our children's programs, it's a wonderful way for children to start their own faith journey early in their lives. So thank you, Mr. Mark. I'm grateful also to everybody in this congregation who donates or volunteers or manages our mission. It is the most incredible outreach that we have in this community. And thank you, it, it is so meaningful in transforming lives. And I'm also grateful, I'm also grateful to Lance Marshall and Tom McDermott because they have created uh, uh, services and ministries. They have created um, new ministries that is attracting people to come downtown to our church on Sunday morning. So I, I thank Lance and Tom for their work in bringing in new members. And then, of course, 
I'm extremely grateful that Tim Brewster is our senior pastor. Tim Brewster is our leader in all of these areas, in all of these missions, in all of the work we do in this church and in this community, and really sometimes around the world. Um, I love his sermons. There's no question about it. I think he provides some of the most insightful sermons I've ever heard and the most meaningful in transforming my life. So thank you, Tim. But most especially, I am grateful that I can be a member of a church where everybody is welcome. So that's a wonderful thing about this church. Okay, so it takes all of us to transform lives in Fort Worth and beyond. And that takes money. I've gotten around to the subject now. That takes money. So this congregation has always been very generous, and I thank you for that. But in our stewardship program this year, we're asking you to sign a pledge card, make a financial commitment, and then, of course, honor it for 2019. I'm pleased to say that Frank and I signed our card last week, and we were able to find a a way to increase it just a little bit, and we feel good about that. So I hope that you'll join Frank and me in making a pledge to our stewardship program so that we can continue to do these wonderful things in this community and for this congregation and beyond. Now, every Sunday, I think it's a good reminder, we reaffirm our faith and we say, in life, in death, in life beyond death, we are not alone, thanks be to God. Thank you. Thanks so much, Connie. Sorry about the popping. We tried to figure out what was going on with that. We thought we had it solved. Should I go over here? All right. So, um, okay, we're good now. Um, it's, it's wonderful to, uh, to, to be in worship and to continue this series of, of timeless wisdom. And uh, in these few minutes, I I just want to lift up uh, one of the images that we find in the wisdom literature, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Psalms, uh, Proverbs, uh, Ecclesiastes, all the wisdom literature we find in the Hebrew scriptures that's echoed in Jesus' teaching and in the other writings in the New Testament as well. We began early in this service with reading the words of Psalm 1, the very first Psalm has this image of being rooted. Uh, and, and it says that those who delight in the law of the Lord, those who embrace the teachings of God are like trees that are planted by streams of water and they put down deep roots and they bear fruit and, and, uh, and the leaves do not wither. Jesus picks up on this in his parable uh, that's usually called the parable of the sower. Parable of the sower. And that parable really is not well named. It's not really a focus on the sower. The sower is important. Uh, The extravagance of the sower certainly stands out. We might even say the wastefulness of the sower because the sower is broadcasting seeds just everywhere on good soil and the not so good soil. They just fall everywhere. Extravagant broadcasting of the seeds. But it's not really focused on the sower and it's not really focused on the seeds. So calling it the parable of the seeds really doesn't work either because the parable really is not about the seeds that are all the same, they're all good seeds, but it's really about the distinction among the soils. It's it's probably the the parable of the soils. Now when I was a kid, I remember I had a teacher that uh, would correct me when I said dirt for some reason. She didn't like dirt. Uh, You know, where where I grew up, it was dirt, right? But she would say, no, we call it soil. I can remember that. So you could call it the parable of the dirt, but we're calling it the parable of the soils. And it's different kinds of soils. And and it represents how open one is to receiving God's love and God's grace and the call and the challenge of God on our lives. That's, That's what the soils are about. And... It's not as though we're all of one kind of soil or another. Uh, It's not as though in any given time in our life we might be mostly one kind of soil, but that can change over time depending on the season of our lives. 
And, and it's not as though every aspect of our life is the same. So keep that in mind as we think about these soils. The parable of the soils, there are four kinds of soil that Jesus talks about. The first is the hard beaten path. If you can picture in your mind's eye fields that are plowed up, not in rows like we're used to, but just plowed up and the sower would come and broadcast the seeds uh, all over the fields. And some of the seeds would fall on these hard beaten paths that run between the fields. They're almost like concrete. They're beaten hard by the foot traffic uh, between the fields. And some of the seed fall there, and the birds come and eat them. There's no way the seed can get into the soil to take root. There are seasons in our lives, there are places in our lives, too, where we're like that hard-packed soil, sometimes beaten down by difficulties and stresses and problems, like a beaten path. Sometimes we can find ourselves becoming kind of cynical about the world and build a shell around ourselves. We can become like that hard-packed path so that we're suspicious of the motives of others. We close ourselves off uh, to receiving the good news of God's love and God's grace and, and the challenge and the call of God on our lives. We can be in some places in our lives, closed off in that way to God's grace and love. And so we can be like that soil at different times, different places. We can also be like the uh, soil, uh, the, the second soil that Jesus describes, and it's the rocky soil. A year and a half ago, Susan and I bought a house out near Eagle Mountain Lake. And if, if you live out near Eagle Mountain Lake, you know what rocky soil is. When we moved in, there was almost no grass in the front yard. And uh, when it rained, what we grew in the front yard were rocks. They would just sort of come up, it seemed like, out of the ground uh, as the, there was almost no topsoil. That's what Jesus is describing, very thin layer of soil. There's an, there's an old uh, Arab story uh, that when God created the world, that God sent two angels out with big sacks containing all the rocks that the world would contain. And when over what we now refer to as the area of uh, Palestine, one of the sacks broke and half of the rocks intended for the whole world ended up there. <laughs> and Jesus' hearers would have understood that, and understood what rocky soil was about. And, and nothing really grows there. If we had not done anything with our yard and we had simply scattered seeds on the yard, uh, yeah, they might have germinated, but when we hit the first 95 degree day, they would have wilted. That's the image Jesus has. That's the image of that kind of burst of enthusiasm that we might have where we, where we, we okay, we're, yes, I understand God's love and God's grace, and yes, I'm going to be God's person in the world, and we have great enthusiasm about that, and then the heat comes, and it, the difficulties come, and... Um, and if there's no depth there, we can, we can find that our faith begins to wither. And that can happen. It can happen in different seasons of our lives for all of us. It can happen sometimes in different areas of our life as well. For, for me, when I think about that, I think about that enthusiasm for a new piece of exercise equipment. Do you know that? You just, this is gonna revolutionize my life. I'm gonna be healthy. This is gonna be great and you get the thing set up and you start using it and it's just hard and it's just difficult and and so pretty soon when the difficulty comes it becomes a clothes rack you know <laughs> and and it's that way sometimes in this realm of, of faith this realm of God's call and God's challenge in our lives in Christ and so there's that that uh, kind of soil. And then the one that I guess troubles me most of all, the one that challenges me most of all is the thorny soil. It's, it's where uh, the thorns grow up, Jesus says, from that thorny soil with the crops. And the problem is they grow a little bit faster and, and they're more aggressive and they can choke out uh, the, uh, the seeds of faith 
that have sprouted. That one's a challenge for me. The noise, the distractions, uh, those things that are going on that take my emotions in one way or the other. And I can find if I allow those to, they can become more and more and more a part of my life and can weaken my sense of God's love and God's grace and the challenge and the call of God on my life. Have you ever experienced that? The thorny soil. There's so much that calls for our attention and, and that can crowd out that which is most important. And then of course there's the, there's the good, the good soil. It's, it's those times and those places in our life where we have really, as Mr. Mark said, we've prepared. We, we have practiced the disciplines of our faith and worship and, and study and, and fellowship and, and giving and, and serving and praying. And, and, and more and more we find that our lives are open to receiving this wonderful news of the grace and the love of God in Christ and the call and the challenge on our lives. And, and, and that's, that's represented by the good soil. And, and the seed takes root and it grows and it yields fruit. It's the fruitfulness of life that comes from this open heart and life for opening those places in our lives where we might want to protect and close off, opening those to God so that God can be at work in us and through us. And our lives bear fruit. And the fruit that our lives bear is, is, is powerful. The power of growth. I was thinking about that a lot this week. I, I remember, um, how many of you had the experience in school of having the little paper cup with the soil in it and the seed pressed down in it and you put it in the window seal. You know what I'm talking about? And it sprouts. And to watch the power of that little seed becoming something else and becoming so much greater than it started out is, is astounding. I can still remember it as a child. I can remember experiencing it all over again with our daughters as they experienced that in school as well. The power of a seed to grow and to flourish and to bear fruit. About 10 or 12 years ago, they discovered some date palm seeds at Masada. Archaeologists discovered them and they germinated. And there is now a, date, a type of date palm tree that was extinct that now lives. Uh, the tree is over 10 feet tall now uh, because of the germination of, of the seeds. Those seeds were carbon dated. They are 2,000 years old. 2,000 years the seeds lay dormant and then they germinated. The power of life within them. And so it is with this good news of our faith, the power to transform and to make new and to bear fruit. Uh, and, and the wisdom of the ages calls us to open our lives to God that we might bear fruit as we are God's people in the world. And that's risky to do. Uh, it, it, it takes some risk to open ourselves in that way. It takes some risk to, to begin to take the fruitfulness of our own life and to share it with others, whether that's our time, our talents, our, our, our money, whatever it is. It takes some risk to do that. But it's that risk that ultimately bears fruit. It's like that old story of the farmer who's sitting out on his front porch and somebody comes by and says, how's your cotton crop? He said, I didn't plant any cotton. Afraid of boll weevils. Well, how about, how about your corn? How's your corn? No, didn't plant any corn. Afraid of drought. Well, what about potatoes? No, afraid of, afraid of uh, potato bugs. Didn't plant potatoes. Did you plant anything? No, I just played it safe, he said. <laughs> Playing it safe is not very fruitful. And sometimes... Sometimes out of fear, we can play it too safe. And that compromises the fruitfulness of our lives. So it's my prayer for you and for me as we go from this place, that we would go as God's people in the world to open our lives in such a way that we would bear fruit. Amen.
whether it be dirt or whether it be soil. Regardless, we want to absorb you, O oh God, your presence, your forgiveness, your love. We want to take all that you offer us and we want to use it to, to sing out, to not play it safe, to see the world around us with gratitude, to see the world around us with enthusiasm, to recognize that what you enable to grow within us becomes extraordinary. What a wonderful and humbling thing that is. And so, as your enthusiastic children, we offer all of our prayers to you now. And we do so in Jesus' name, who teaches us to pray together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth at We come now to our time of giving, and I ask our ushers to come forward to accept our offerings. And we ask God's blessings on these offerings that they might continue to touch lives and transform them and to transform this world for the kingdom of God. Lord, I keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time, cause when I'm healing the sick, when I'm healing the sick, when I'm healing the sick, Ain't got time to die Cause it takes all of my time To praise my Jesus All of my time To praise my Lord If I don't praise Him The rock's gonna cry out Glory and honor Glory and honor Ain't got time Lord, I keep so busy working for the kingdom Keep so busy working for the kingdom Keep so busy working for the kingdom Ain't got time Cause when I'm feeding the poor When I'm feeding the poor When I'm feeding the poor Ain't got time to die Cause it takes all of my time To praise my Jesus all my time Lord, I keep so busy serving my master. Keep so busy serving my master. Keep so busy serving my master. Ain't got time. Cause when I'm giving my all, when I'm giving my all, when I'm giving my all, ain't got time to die. Cause all of my time to praise my Jesus All of my time to praise my Lord If I don't praise Him, the rock's gonna cry out Glory and honor, glory and honor Ain't got time Now won't you get out of my way Get out of my way If I don't praise Him, the rock's gonna cry out Glory and honor
hope you've noticed that our closing hymn is going to be number 670 in the hymnal and that our choir will be leading us singing the first verse and then we'll have a chance to join in with verses two through four. And as we do that, if today's the day that you would like to become a member of this faith community to nourish yourself here, we look forward to enthusiastically welcoming you at the communion rail. So we invite you to come forward as we now raise our voices to God. Our gathering will soon be ended. Where will we go and what will we do? May grace, peace, hope, love, and joy forever accompany you. Amen. <laughs>